Central. And if you missed Faith School earlier today, you can watch it again tonight. Faith School with Keith Moore tonight at 10 p.m. Eastern, 9 Central. You know, there's so much going on here and happening on the Victory Channel. So for more information, take a look at our program schedule by going to GoVictory.com. That's GoVictory.com. Make sure you keep it right here on the Victory Channel. What exactly is partnership? And how can we link arms and stand together around a common goal? How can we change the world together? These are questions that we ask this week on Inside the Vision. Because where we all give is where we all go together. Join us Tuesday, 9 p.m. Eastern, Friday, 8.30 p.m. Eastern. Remember, God loves you and we love you. And Jesus is Lord. Good evening, everybody. I'm Gene Bailey, and you are watching Flashpoint. Glad you're with us tonight. Listen, are you ready? Sit down, buckle your seatbelt, because listen, you're going to have a, we've got a great program lined up for you. Let me show you who's with me just to get things started. Uh, from the great state of, where are you at? Nebraska. That's right. Uh, Pastor Hank Kuhneman, <laughs> Jesse Duplantis, yes, and our good friend Nebraska. Tony Suarez. Uh, thank you guys for being here tonight. We're got, let's get right into it. I, I want to talk about the State of the Union. Before I, I forgot to say this. Special thank you to Lance Wall now for stepping in and hosting Thursday night's show. He did a great job, and uh, and then he joined me at the place I was, so uh, which was kind of funny. But anyway, thank you, Lance, for all you did to help us with Flashpoint. All right, so as you know, there was a State of the Union address. Look at some of the. We're going to show you a couple of reactions to what the media had to say about Joe Biden. Watch for a speech about a comeback. He didn't seem very happy about it, did he? He seemed angry. There was plenty of stumbling and slurring of words and all the rest of it that we've come to associate with him and taken as a sign of his senility and his advancing age and, and the effect that it has on a person. So I don't think he got out from under that at all. And I'm not sure that a person sitting at home tonight looking at the guy would think he was anything other than an angry old man. Angry old man. That's Britt Hume. All right, let's go over to Tucker Carlson, and let me just show you this short clip of what he started in his reaction. Watch. That was quite an experience watching that. You know, you think of Joe Biden as a doddering old man, a guy who can't remember when his son died or when he served as vice president. And of course, that's exactly who he is, and it's on display every day. But Joe Biden is also a cruel and vicious demagogue, a man who has no problem at all denouncing his fellow Americans or putting his political opponents in prison, as he has done. And that was all on display tonight. That was possibly the darkest, most un-American speech ever given by an American president. All right. So uh, a lot of reactions uh, on both sides to stay the union address and what we were seeing there from Joe Biden. Now, listen, people like to jump on this age bandwagon. Age has got nothing to do with it. There's a lot of people older than him that are sharp and mentally acute. So this is not an age, uh, an age issue. However, it is a definitely a medical issue that we have, a comprehension issue, uh, the shuffling and everything. Uh, you understand that's really the issue. But let me uh, let me talk to you about. Let me show you this tweet. Uh, Stephen Miller says they're not adequate words for this level of repugnancy. Americans built America, not illegal aliens and not murderous migrants. Jesse Duplantis, you, you know th this whole point, and we'll get into what he when he actually called somebody illegals. Uh, the the truth is here. The border really overlays. It's becoming a bigger issue, a bigger issue in all of America because it affects so many parts of, of our life. Your comment. Well, I'll tell you this. That was not a State of the Union address, in my opinion. That was a campaign speech. And let me just say this. You know, I think they shot him up with some speed. Because, you know, before I was born again, I, I took speed to, to, so he could not, have to walk out real fast and all those kind of things. And we know that we've seen too many, too many films of him stumbling and things of that nature. But, you know, I heard someone say when you're angry like that, that is a kind of a, a senility kind of situation there. But it was not. And, you know, but I just looked at it and smiled. And, you know, I, I, what I don't understand is why don't the family do something to help this man? 
You see what I'm saying? I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to hurt the man, but I mean, that was, that was the worst thing I ever saw and because it was not a state of the union address. He was just trying to say he was strong and, and things of that nature. And You know, and you can be an old man and holler, and you can be a young man and holler. See, but when you can't, but what are you saying? And you can see the stumbling and the different things that are happening. Of course, if you look at the other side, is that he's come back. He's come back to what? See, they don't tell you what he's come back to, see. I, so I, I don't consider that a state of the union address whatsoever at all. And the border, I mean, we are a nation of immigrants, and actually it slipped out right. These people are illegal. That's Just right. that simple. I mean, you know, you know, but they don't want real words undocumented, you know, right. and different things of that. And I understand where they're going. That's not the issue. But I want to tell everybody that's watching, the American people are not stupid. I mean, we, we, you may have been born at night, but you weren't born last night. And that's the whole key to that. And, you know, if people just do it the right way, I, America will invite people and things of that nature. But you know what was happening by this border? It's the same thing that happened when Fidel Castro took over Cuba. He, what did he send to Miami? He emptied out all his jails. He he sent all the gangsters and all the different things. People have forgotten about that. See what I'm saying? And that's what's happening now. All these people, they just, we're just, we, we don't have to keep them in prison. Just send them to America because they can come in and just cross the border. But America's going to pay for this. And I mean, pay for it big because um, these people do not like us. See, they just want us to pay them, what is it, $1,000 or $1,400 a month and a $1,000 credit card and all that kind of stuff and, and things of that nature. But they're also going to hurt people, and yeah. we're already seeing that. And I That's think true. it's time for all of us to stand up and say, excuse me, I say what it is. You know, black is black, white is white, brown is brown, red, yellow, whatever. Just say it. And when that girl was killed, uh, I personally believe that was because of that policy. It was. You know, and when you can't remember her name, my God, what's your problem here? You're supposed to be the president, see, of the United States. And we know that he's not, that he's being controlled. You know, it's the puppet on the strings. See, who is holding the strings for this man? See, and we all know that. But, you know, we talk a lot about it, but nobody ever does anything about it. And the way to do that, and I guess I'm a populist, is you get 74 million people in the streets. Yep. When you get them in the streets and you're willing to look at the devil and spit, and not walk away, I'm telling you, things will change. They will change indeed, and there's precedence there. Uh, let me go to you, Tony Suarez, to weigh in on the, the border. Is the border really, you agree with Jesse, is the border what's causing all this issue? The, the, the border is the worst it's ever been in my lifetime. And what I talked to, a lot, you know, I was raised in first-generation immigrant churches in Chicago. Uh, what we knew of the border what the issue was 30 years ago, and I would actually say even 10 years ago, is no longer the issue today. Uh, you, people used to make jokes about, you know, coming over, working agriculture, picking fruits and vegetables in California, being deported, and don't worry, I'll be back tomorrow. That's not the case anymore. There are terrorists, there are drug trafficking, uh, drug traffickers, human trafficking taking place like never before. And I'm of the belief, and again, I'm the son of an immigrant, who came legally, mind you, from Colombia, I'm of the of the opinion that we have to completely close the border. I don't know if that's for two days, two months, or two years, but we have to close the border. Uh, right before we came live, I sent Gene a picture. We're in the middle of a building renovation. Well, last week, someone accidentally, something happened. We lost 80,000 gallons of water by the time the water company came here. You know what they had to do to find the issue? They had to turn, they had to go out to the main water valve and turn all the water off and then we could solve the problem. So yeah, there's 30 million illegally undocumented people in this country right now. You hear a lot of people talking about immigration reform and what to do with these people. We can't even address that issue until someone's willing to go to the border and close it completely and say, now that no one else is entering, now we can do something. And now, and then someone else asked me about uh, President Trump's comments about the uh, using the military to round up people that are here illegally. 
And I, I think they thought that they were asking me a trick question, you know, that they were going to trip me up with that. I said, absolutely. Use the military to round up every terrorist, every uh, member of, of the Mexican mafia cartel that's here, round up the violent uh, element that's amongst us. And then and only then, after you've completely shut down the border, after you have removed this terrorist element that is in our nation, then and only then can we look through the eyes of compassion to those that remain? But it has to go in that order. We have to close the border and then we can deal with these other issues. I agree. All right, let me, before I go to Pastor Hank, I want, uh, Pastor Hank, I want you to see this uh, since we've already talked about, this is Joe Biden apologizes for what he says, watch. But during your response to her heckling of you, you used the word illegal when talking about the man who allegedly killed um, Lake and Riley. An undocumented person. And I shouldn't have used illegal. I should have, it's undocumented. And look. It's undocumented. It's undocumented. Uh, all right. What does President Trump have to say? I'm, I know I'm going ahead, guys. Let's play uh, what President Trump responded at his, uh, his event to, to, the, to the Biden apology. Watch. When I say he was an illegal alien, he was an illegal immigrant, he was an illegal migrant, and he shouldn't have been in our country, and he never would have been under the Trump policy. And Biden should be apologizing for All right. apologizing to this killer. All right, Pastor Hank, let me get you to comment on that. Well, I think we've covered a lot of ground so far. So I'd like to back up with the state of the disunion. I mean, there was nothing that was unifying about what a state of the union is. It's to bring our country together. What a disaster. It felt like we were being vomited on, yelled at. Did you notice all the funny faces from the people that uh, were in uh, the, the state of the union, uh, especially the speaker of the house? I, I got a kick out of him. And even Cacklin Kamala, she could hardly believe what she was hearing. So you know they're not in agreement with, with, what's, with each other. And, and then did you notice the same 30 people that seem to stand up and uh, begin to clap. It's like they had rehearsed that. They knew how to clap very well. Um, and then I heard something that really was uh, disturbing. So one of the things that they said is that we who are wanting to see America better, or how about this, make America great again, uh, it's all about what we're against, not what we are for and the opposing side, the liberal loony left, they're all for something. And what they don't understand, what we're against is transgender mutilation, for example, of our children, no parental consent. We're against open borders. We're against the lunacy of what they're doing to bring greater perversion into our schools, our curriculums, and the list goes on and on and on and on and on. Let's fast forward. So now you look at what uh, he's saying about undocumented. And I want to say, uh, excuse me, it is documented. You forgot Lincoln Riley's name. You forgot a precious United States citizen, someone that is precious to us, we the people. And uh, you have allowed open borders. You're sweeping right over the fact. And what you really need to do is close the border. And, and I've said it on one of the flashpoints before. How about a Lake and Riley uh, act where they act now? They close the border. They do what's right. They get the military involved. They get local uh, in state en enforcement and they begin to crack down. And then they begin to find out who is here legally and illegally, and they need to do it. And like what President Trump said, you use local law enforcement. They know who the bad guys are. They know where these people are at. And then finally, I think there's something also that's important. And that's it. It's pretty bad when you're a United States citizen and you've been struggling at one time, mothers, to get formula for their children. You're seeing the high gas prices and inflation. It's almost like, Pastor Gene, if you want to better your life, you can leave the United States and enter in acting like an illegal if you're a citizen or enter illegally. They hand you a cell phone and they give you a paycheck. I mean, what makes sense? It, it, it's totally wrong. And so what we need to do is we need to continue to stand strong, stand with those who are elected officials wanting to do something about right. this border. Let our voice be known. But it really is time to bring order back to the border. That's why I've said it from the start. Border 
has the word order in it, and it's time to establish that. And we need to do it uh, sooner than later. And I believe uh, all of America, or 99% of America, agrees with just that. Let's go back to 2009, and let me show you what President Obama had to say about border immigration. This will be surprising. Watch. This is not going to be a free ride. It's not going to be some instant amnesty. What's going to happen is you are going to pay a significant fine. You are going to learn English. You are going to, you are going to go to the back of the line so that you don't get ahead of somebody who was in Mexico City applying legally. But after you've done these things over a certain period of time, you can earn your citizenship so that it's not, it's not something that is guaranteed or automatic. You've got to earn it, but over time, you give people an opportunity. Now, it only works, though, if you do all the pieces. I, I think the American people, they appreciate and believe in immigration, but they can't have a situation where you just have half a million people pouring over the border without any kind of mechanism to control it. So we've got to deal with that at the same time as we deal in a humane fashion with folks who have put down roots here, have become our neighbors, have become our friends. They may have children who are U.S. citizens. That's the kind of comprehensive approach that we have to take. All right, uh, Tony, let me come back to you here for the, because that sounds like a reasonable plan. I think most Americans yeah. would go, I never knew Obama said that. Uh, it sounds like a reasonable plan. Well, well first off, a a amen, Brother Obama, absolutely. Um, and, you know, Pastor Sam, who I work with in the NHCLC, we were involved in those discussions. Uh, we've advocated for plans similar to that for well over a decade. Here's the issue. To all, and this is what all of our citizens need to understand. The issue is that politicians campaign on the issue. And then once elected, they do absolutely nothing about the situation. Republicans and Democrats are both to blame. This is why we need term limits. These are career politicians that will say anything to get your vote, to get into office, and then they do nothing. This has been going on now. So, you know, I've, I've said it many times. I'm in my mid-40s. The last time there was immigration reform, Ronald Reagan was the president, and I was in kindergarten. That's how long they've been talking about this, and they do nothing. Now, we've taken it a step further than what you heard President Obama. And by the way, if you want to hear an incredible soundbite similar to that, you should have heard what Bill President Clinton was saying in the mid-90s about illegal immigration, because he was tougher than Obama. Yeah, At this was. point in the game, there shouldn't even be citizenship on the table. That shouldn't even be one of the things that's, that's even an option. And I think it's important that we understand what Obama laid out could, something like that could work today. But that, that, uh, get in the back of the line and all those pieces, understand that's not a six-month process. That's like a 12-year process, making sure that, that uh, making sure they clear the background check, they pay the fine, get in the back of the line. That's a long process, but we can't even do something like that. We can't even address something like that until they close the border and we remove that criminal element. Then and only then can we both can we go back to the table and try to address immigration reform once and for all? All right, uh, Jesse, I'll let you uh, weigh in on that uh, same 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 comment. Well, the the whole key to this thing is that you know I understand that they use the thing that these are people, and we understand that, but we are we supposed to be a nation of laws. And, you know, I think and I want to say this going back to that State of the Union, I think one of the worst things, that uh, our president did was how he lambasted the Supreme Court right there in front of him. And if I was a chief justice, I'd have turned around and tell him, let's get out of here. And if that one comes, because he don't think they, he don't care about the Supreme Court because they told him he couldn't cancel all those, uh, what it goes, those, those bills for the, for the students. And he went around in another way to do that. Right. And I thought that was just totally very rude and wrong. But if they'd have stood up, and walked out because they got just as much power because they're the, they're the third part of this government, you know, legislature, you know, the president and naturally the courts, you see, but nobody has the guts to do those things. And when you begin, when you, when you get a, like that starts happening, then immigration, call it reform, it will begin to work right when people start doing right because it is right. He's saying what I love about the Supreme Court, they don't have to run for the office. 
That's why they can say what they want. I was so glad about that 9-0 uh, judgment that they used on that. And I think they're going to they're gonna step on their own selves when they keep attacking this court. And those people that are the liberal left on the Supreme Court is going to say enough is enough. And, and I really do. And you have to close the border because it's so bad. I wish we wouldn't have to, but you have to to fix things, you know. Right. And that's the only way to do it. And you know what? I hate to say that, but some good people are going to get hurt in the process. But we in the middle of an invasion, ladies and gentlemen, we got to do something and quit talking and start acting, see? And that's the whole key to this thing. And uh, you hear Obama and they all do that. The problem is once they, they, they get the office, they start rerunning again, see? They come in, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. They don't do nothing, nothing, because they start rerunning for the next, whatever, four years, two years, term, right. whatever they use, and start raising money, and that's the problem, see? And, you know, and, and if they would just do what they said, but you know what? A lot of the own, their own constituents will not call them to the, call, uh, uh, hold it at their feet, say, excuse me, why haven't you done that? I wish the black people of America would have stood up and said, Mr. Obama, why haven't you helped us? Why haven't you helped us? But, you know, it just kept going on. And I, that I know of, he hadn't done a thing to help the black people in any way, shape, or form. But now they're standing up. Of course, everybody gets mad. They're standing up for Trump or something like that. But, I mean, my God, say something and do something. But we have to hold all the politicians to what they said. And not just say it, but stand up and do it, and then this thing will change. All right, let me, let me show you. Pastor Hank, I'm, I want to get you to speak on... Um, what I know you've been teaching on imprecatory prayers and how we pray about this. But before we get to that, look at this. Um, this is from the Post Millennial. This is the news poll uh, Fox News did. 71%, 71% say that Joe Biden mostly failed improving border security. So there you go. You can look at all the way on the bottom, all the way on the right, bottom right hand corner. There you go, 71%. Of course, you can look at handling the economy, making the U.S. safer, unifying the country. All of that goes back to the border. So, Pastor Hank, uh, is even most of Americans, even in this poll, will stand up and say, yeah, this is he's failing. So how do we go from here? What do we, as Christians, as believers, we need to pray? But how should we pray about this situation with the border? Well, I think first and foremost, Pastor Gene, you know, I was reading something in the book of Nehemiah today as I was preparing for this show, just thinking about the borders, the walls. And Nehemiah 4, 6 said that the people had a heart and a mind to work, and that was to build a wall. So you can see with these policies and with those that are trying to keep the borders open, they don't have a heart for this nation. Their mind is not on us, the, the people who are citizens first. Their mind is on an evil agenda. So the first thing you got to do is you've got to bind up, which we're going to do, the evil agenda of the enemy that Paul said, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but we operate and we wrestle against spiritual darkness, evil forces that use men who uh, cooperate or yield uh, to these demonic spirits. The second thing I saw was in Nehemiah 6. It said in verse 15, they finished the wall. We need to pray for God to close the border. And if they don't do it in the natural, we ask God to restrain it in the spirit. So let's pray. So I think what I hear, I hear this word coming up in my heart, this phrase I hear, let's pray that the borders will be closed and let's pray that the hearts of those who have come over will be open to Yeshua, to salvation, to the way of rightness, to the way of order and to the way of morals. Father, in the name of Yeshua, as we come to the highest court, where you have declared that the very foundation of your throne is righteousness and justice. So we petition the court of heaven and we come against, according to the words of Yeshua, whatever is bound on earth shall be bound from the court of heaven upon this earth. And whatever is loosed, Lord God, from the court of heaven shall be loosed upon this earth. So Lord God, right now we bind any satanic activity of evil forces that desire to steal, to kill, 
kill and destroy concerning this country, concerning the lives of the innocent. And we are calling for a heavenly restraint now to come. And we say it over our cities. We say it over the innocent. We say, Lord God, the God of justice, bring those who have come to this country, Lord God, in insurgency to bring harm, to bring evil, restrain them, expose them. And God cause their hands to be shackled as they be brought to justice now. And they will not be allowed to carry out their agenda. We are asking you, God, now to open the hearts of those who have come over, that Yeshua, you will reveal yourself, that they will call upon the name of the Lord to be saved, that their hearts will change. And as a result, Lord God, they will come and be part of that which is orderly as you see fit, Father, for the future of this country. We're asking you to close this border. We're asking you to move upon those in governmental uh, authority and positions. But God, if they refuse, we're asking you then to put the power of your restraint by the power of your Holy Spirit in Yeshua's name. Amen. 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 We agree with that. Um, all right. So, um, Part of our response to all of this with the border is that uh, we decided, I decided to tell Tony what he should do. And uh, Tony, you're going to the border. Uh, explain again what you're doing coming up here in the latter part of March. Yeah, March 21st through the 29th, under orders, orders of the Lord and Gene Bailey, we're going to the we're going to the border, and we're going to have revival on the border. The only answer is Jesus. We're not going to go uh, preach politics. We're not going to protest. We're going to pray. And one of the uh, one of the things I felt the Lord told us to do was to dispatch an angelic border patrol. According to Genesis chapter two, the Lord sent an angelic border patrol around the Garden of Eden, and He told us to go to the border. So we're driving the one thousand two hundred and fifty four miles of the border from El Paso all the way down to Brownsville. And we're gonna dispatch an angelic border patrol, believing that the Lord is gonna protect, just like Pastor Hank just prayed. We're believing for that. And we're believing that the angels of the Lord are also gonna go into the desert and find those that have been deserted, those that have been raped and abused and been left to die. And we're believing that the angels of the Lord are gonna go and minister to them, bring healing and draw them to the tents. And we're gonna preach Jesus to them. We're gonna water baptize people. And I'm believing for a minimum of 5,000 people to have an experience with the Lord, March 21st through the 29th at Revival on the Border from El Paso all the way down to McAllen and Brownsville. And Tony, people can join you down there uh, they can get all the information right there at TonySuarez.com. Uh, all the details of everything go there uh, and, and be a part and financially help Tony as he's doing this. It's not exactly, uh, you know, something. There's not going to be a whole lot of money raised at the border. Let me put it that way. Uh, <laughs> but you can help and you and I can help send Tony and the team down there. Uh, we're trying to work it out to uh, go down there as well and at least for a night and see. So listen. TonySuarez.com, Revival on the Border. You heard earlier, Jesse talking about we got to get in the streets. This is part of it. We got to put our money where our mouth is, get our hands and feet out there and go win. What a great opportunity for salvation and for signs and wonders. Man, there's nothing better than a revival on the border. Can you imagine? That's what we want to see and that's what we're believing for. And I know you do too, so come be a part. All right, we're going to take a break. I see our good friend Mike Lindell is in the house. We're going to get the latest update from him and so much more when we come back from this break. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Calling all Flashpoint Army members and new recruits to the Tulsa 2024 Flashpoint Live Rescue America Tour, March 21st through the 22nd. Join Gene Bailey and the Flashpoint team for a special forces-like gathering to receive a heavenly mission debriefing you do not want to miss. That's March 21st through the 22nd, Tulsa, Oklahoma. This is a ticketed event, so make plans today. Register at 2024flashpoint.live. A call is going out for believers to rise up. It's time for action. Be who God says you are and transform the world around you. In Flashpoint of Revival, Gene Bailey, host of Flashpoint and Revival Radio TV, sounds the alarm for the church to wake up, get up, and suit up as a people ready to advance the kingdom in this critical hour. Many are waiting on God to send down revival, but God is waiting on the church to rise up. Order your copy of Flashpoint of Revival today. 
My parents raised me right. I can see that more and more every single day. My generation needs to know that it's okay to go against the mainstream. I choose righteousness. I love this country so much that I bled for it. And now that I'm back home, I can see the fight isn't over. The future of this great nation hangs in the balance, and I won't stand by. I live in the land of opportunity, and I want to keep it that way. I'll show people that freedom is what makes us thrive. I can be that example. I won't let the world have my grandchildren if I have anything to say about it. The next generation needs a real example of strength. I'll be that. I am the Flashpoint Army. 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 Welcome back to the second half. Flashpoint, so much more to cover. Uh, listen, you saw during the break there, we are coming to Tulsa, Oklahoma. I don't know what you're doing, but I know where you need to be. You need to join us right there uh, coming up here in just a little less than two weeks, March 21st, 22nd. Uh, you can go on the website. It's right there, 2024flashpoint.live. Get all the information. Yes, this is a ticket event. Yes, that means there's a fee. We're, we did that on purpose. We still have some free events during the rest of the year. But a lot of people, let me, let me just explain something. A lot of people say, oh, we're coming, we're coming, and then they, then they don't come. For whatever reason, they don't come. Uh, so we wanted to have an intimate, a smaller event where we can get out with you and talk. There's gonna be, you're gonna hear different things. You're gonna, you're gonna be able to uh, uh, borrow some money from Pastor Hank. Uh, he'll be there. Sure. You'll be able to you know, get, get out. Listen, it's going to be, uh, there's gonna be some unique things. If you wanted to be a VIP, those already sold out. I uh, don't have any more of those, but you can still come general admission. It's still very much worth your trip. Let me see, show you some of the speakers are coming. Michelle Bachman, Caroline Joyous will uh, join us. Pastor Hank Kuhneman, Lance Walnow, Pastor Cheyon, Rick Green. And you just never know who might else show up. So go sign up, be a part, 2024flashpoint.live. All right, let me bring in uh, our good friend, Mike Lindell. You got something coming up this Thursday or this Friday. Uh, talk to us, Mike. Give us the update. Well, it's actually going to be Thursday, everybody. And uh, instead of Friday, the lawyers talked me out of it. Uh, the big case, this case, I've been waiting three years. You've all been waiting for the Supreme Court. We were going to do it on the steps of the Supreme Court, hand deliver it. The lawyers talked me out. They said, no, we're going to file it on Thursday electronically. I haven't been back to D.C. since January 7th of 2021. And they told me it probably wouldn't be very safe for me to go in there with what we're going to present. Um, Gene, what we're bringing them is a petition for writ of certiori. And I'm going to explain this. This, uh, this was the case that I started back in Arizona before the 2022 election. We were going to go state by state. We did Arizona, Alabama. We were going to keep moving on to get rid of these electronic voting machines, uh, basically like defective products. The first... Uh, plaintiffs in, were in Arizona, that was the first case, was Mark Fincham and Kerry Lake before they ran for office. Well, this, and this case, by the way, is very similar to what they did in, when the Democrats took Crooked Brad Rassenberger to court uh, four years ago in the curling case in Georgia, by the way, that just went to trial January 9th. That's where the guy hacked in with a pen right in front of the judge and flipped the whole election. But interesting enough, this case in Arizona, everybody, Remember, I've been looking for a door that would open to the Supreme Court that no man could shut. And, and here's, here's how this door opened up. Back then, they dismissed this case on standing and said the evidence was speculative. Well, okay, um, the, uh, you're telling us this, and they dismissed it on standing, that Kerry Lake and Mark Fincham didn't have standing? There were people running for office. Anyway, that was appealed to the Ninth Circuit in Arizona, and they affirmed it. They said, yep, they did the right thing down below. Then the lawyers were sanctioned, the other big S word in the, that I found out over the last few years. The lawyers were sanctioned, including Alan Dershowitz, which I had hired back then. He was a Democrat. He actually, him and I differed on so much, but he said, hey, we've got to go to fair elections. We've got to get the paper ballots hand counted. 
and, and they were sanctioned. Now, because of the law, this is a beautiful thing, everybody, that because it was kicked out on standing, we now can bring it to the Supreme Court, and the law allows us to bring in additional evidence. Well, I got great news, everybody. Over the last six months, investigations going on from two different uh, places in the world, actually, coming together, and and this evidence is now going to be added to this case is more explosive than anything you've ever seen in history. For any elections anywhere in world history, this is God, this is a divine thing, I'm telling you. So when we bring this on Thursday, the whole world's going to be able to see this new evidence. Now, Gene, I believe, I've been telling everybody, like that little boy that called Wolf, every time I get close to the Supreme Court, something happens where they suppress it. Well, they just voted 9-0 in that great case in they Colorado did. to say, of course, he can be on the ballot. You guys, if they accept this at the Supreme Court, I believe this will be the next 9-0. Our elections were deemed critical infrastructure. And you know what? You've got to protect us from other from foreign countries hacking into our elections. It's sacred. And uh, I am so happy right now. I can't tell you. You know, I'm usually optimistic, but this is off the chart. The only thing that can stop it, everybody, is if we don't get the eyes on it. We know Fox News isn't going to be there. We know the attack media might not even attack me. And we need your help. We need everybody's help. You can go to lindellplan.com. We need your help now. If you've ever helped out anything, we need, I'm, Gene, as you know, I ran out of resources for, for this effort. And I'll tell you what, we're this close, everybody. We're three days away. I'm, it's amazing. All right, it's great. All right, Mike. So, uh, as soon as you as soon as you have any news, you know, you know, I need you back on. So you, you call me, and we'll get you back on. Just if, if we don't hear about it, we want to hear the insight of it. Uh, Tony, you, you hear no. what's going on? This is a, this is a big deal here. When we get into getting this case back where it needs to be. Well, God's at work, and I, I think we should be encouraged tonight. I think we need this. Hey, we're on the Victory Channel, right? Let's see the victory in all of this right now. Uh, from what Mike's doing, uh, someone mentioned earlier, Franklin Graham's on the border right now. You know, we're about to come do a tent revival. Uh, another thing that I think is interesting, uh, just, I mean, let's see it from the victory perspective, right? Every other candidate that could potentially run on the de on the Democratic ticket is bowing out of the race. Doesn't matter if it's Gavin Newsom, Michelle Obama, nobody wants to run against President Trump because they smell victory. I think we need to realize that even our enemies and the enemies of our nation smell victory coming back to the Lord's camp. Not that we were ever out of victory, but the victory that we're about to have in November. There's not one Democrat that wants to run against President Trump. We're on victory side, and now we need to push it and see it all the way through to November. But I'm believing and decreeing that victory is ours in the name of Jesus. I, I amen to that. All right. Hey, so, Mike, you, you get a good, uh, we get a good win here um, uh, on, on Thursday. What happens next then? Well, because uh, there's two things that are going to happen. If they don't accept it, the whole world got to see this explosive evidence. And I'm telling you, everyone in the world is going to go in, the, in this country. I don't care if you're a Democrat or Republican. If you're, if you're here, you're going to go, we need to do something, and we need to do it now. Supreme Court, you need to accept this. Uh, this could also be we can add on an injunction that could they could order paper ballots being counted overnight, just like that judge did in Argentina this summer, guys. One judge said, hey, we got to go to paper ballots hand counted. They did it. I just met that president at CPAC. They freed their country for the first time in decades. And this is where that's at. Gene, I want to say this, too. We, uh, we, uh, we're we tired of blockers out there. And we just uh, another thing that just happened, the, good, the biggest blocker in the country, of course, is Brad Rassenberger down right. in Georgia and Robin Boss in Wisconsin. We, the people of Wisconsin have just turned in 10,800 uh, signatures in Racine County, Wisconsin, to recall Robin Voss. They only need 6,000 some. So that should go to a recall election and get rid of these guys. These people, these uniparty Republicans that have blocked our efforts to secure our elections in our country are disgusting, and we're going to call them all out. And uh, we had a big victory, too, last week on the lower level in, in right. South Dakota. We uh, that last week they they by one vote we won everybody we can keep our efforts going to 
get every single county in South Dakota in paper ballots. The people are voting on it. There, there are things changing. They, it, it's tipped over. Now we're winning. I'm telling you, it's awesome. It is awesome. It is awesome. Uh, I'll let, let Jesse make the last comment and we'll let you go. Jesse, what do you think about this? Well, I, I, we, what's happening here, I, I like paper ballots. Me and Kathy, we were driving, going to get lunch today, and I said, you know, and I love early uh, going to vote and things of that nature, but now everything's become so electronic and people can fix, you know, they can mess it all up. But when you go a paper ballot, that's a whole new ball game, even though that may be considered old-fashioned. I don't mind, my, I, I don't have to go early voting. I'll just stand in line and if you believe in your vote, but I like the paper ballot. I think that's a wonderful thing. I think God is opening up the Supreme Court. And these, and everything, they're very smart people on that court, including that liberal left. But when you touch that Constitution a certain way, that's why they went 9-0. They are real funny about that because without, without us believing in the Constitution, we don't have a government. So, Mike, I, 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 I'm excited about what you're doing, and I know you've been attacked ferociously about that. So I believe in the paper ballot. And I, and I mean that sincerely. And that way, you know, you, 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 there ain't nobody going in there and trying to get in there and hack into this and hack into that. That's there it right. is in black and white and count the thing, and then you know what you have is really real. That's right. Absolutely. And, and you know what? With these, the, I to, I've said this before. Those nine justices, they have children, grandchildren. They have neighbors. They live right. here. They, if, they t if they accept this, it'll be another 9-0. Um, morality, common sense, and our Constitution has to win win over this Amen. evil. That's why you have this 9-0 vote, and we need another one. And like I said before, and I don't usually do this, Gene, on your show, but there's all one thing. We need to get the word out, and we need resources to do it, and I really could use everybody's help if they went out and helped at lindellplan.com. We need help now. That's it. I've come this far, and I'm, we're 95% right. there. we got three more days, everybody. And after that, it doesn't matter if they, accept, if they don't accept it. We need to show what we're putting That's there. Right. You're going to see evidence. That, well, no one's seen in this world, in world history, what you're going to see. Well, people will be talking about this for 100 years, <clears throat> about what you're going to see on Thursday. Amen. All right, Mike, thank you. Let, let us know as soon as you got any I news, will. you know, and let us know. Thank you for coming by. We'll let you All go. Right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. All right. Uh, let us let me show you something in these last few minutes that we have here. Um uh, this is with uh, Representative Byron Johnson uh, talking to Byron Donalds, talking about what's happening on the left. I want you to see this with Benny Johnson. Watch. Well, look, the Democrats don't care about democracy. They care about power. The radical left isn't concerned about a republic. They're concerned about their agenda. And we got to understand in our country, they've wanted their agenda for 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. And right now they're at the precipice of having all of it. And then what happens when they actually get most of it in place, the people reject it. Cause they're like, this thing sucks. What the heck's going on? You know, you got ladies in Chicago talking about, you know what? I've been voting Democrat my whole life. It's about time I start voting Republican. Cause these people aren't listening to what's going on and they're making it worse. Making it worse. All right, I've, you have got, I'm, I want you to see this next clip. I love this guy. I hope this guy runs for president in the future. This is uh, uh, Lieutenant Governor Mark Robinson from North Carolina. Talk about the left is wrong. Watch. You see, they don't want to talk about the fact that California is falling apart and Florida is flourishing. They don't want to talk about the fact that New York is in a shambles and that North Carolina is on firm financial footing. They don't want to talk about the great things that are going on. In, uh, in Arkansas and other places where great conservatives are at the helm doing great things. When it comes to that, the news media is silent because they don't want to admit one thing. The left is wrong. They are wrong on every topic, on every issue. They don't have a political leg to stand on. They don't have a social leg to stand on. They don't have a spiritual leg to stand on. They have nothing to stand on because they do nothing right. In every state they're running, they're running it straight into the ground. It's a pesky problem for our news media. They despise that. Whenever they mention my name, they always mention my name in, conju in conjunction with social issues and how I hate everybody. According to them, I hate everybody. I hate people who walk and talk and walk upright. I hate people who drive cars. 
I don't hate anybody. Because what I'm doing is not about hate. What you're doing shouldn't be about hate either. We should be operating because of what we love. What we love. Amen to that. All right, Pastor Hank, you heard that. You heard? You heard that. Uh, <laughs> me, give me your, uh, your thought. I mean, it, again, we're not attacking a bunch of people. We're attacking beliefs yeah. that, that are wrong and go contrary to our beliefs mm -hmm. and the, what this country was founded on. But I'll give you first shot at that, Pastor Hank. Go ahead. Well, first of all, I think the guy is a great leader. I appreciate him standing up and telling the truth. That's what America needs right now. We need strong leaders. Judges 5, verse 2, when Israel's leaders led, the people willingly followed. But it requires bravery. I appreciated his honesty. But what he said is true. Let's, let's be honest. The left is wrong. And here's why they are wrong. When people from their own party are leaving by droves, you're talking about the black vote that primarily went towards the Democratic Party. Now you're talking about the Latino vote that they courted uh, for so many years now are starting to say, hey, look, we're no longer voting for this Democratic Party. You guys have gone completely loony. Uh, you've gone towards the way of evil. How about this? You're a party of no religious affiliation. In other words, you don't even want to acknowledge God. You don't want to bring any spirituality of morality. Instead, you just want to continue to legislate evil. And people are waking up and they've had enough. And really, I've heard a lot of people that I uh, run into who were once Democrat, uh, registered Democrats, are saying, you know what? The Democratic Party is not the Democratic Party that we grew up. Uh, voting for it has gone completely towards the left. This earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, and God is a righteous judge, and it's his turn now, and it's why Mike Lindell was raised up, because it's been a pillow fight, but now this country is about to come into rest, because God is intervening himself, and we are going to continue to win victory after victory after victory. Amen. We are going to continue to win. Uh, we're going to, as Trump says, you're going to get tired of winning. We're winning all the time. <laughs> it's true. So we're, we're winning. And you know what? This is the, the point of the program here every week, three times a week, is to encourage you, first off, give you the facts, give you what's really happening. Now, you know, we cannot cover the world in an hour, but we can give you what we believe is the most important stuff to cover. So many more news stories out there. We've got it. We've got enough to talk about for, for days. But... You need to know what's really going on, number one. You need to know what the facts are, things that you're not hearing on the mainstream media. That's why Flashpoint is here. That's why the Victory Channel is here. We want to bring you truth, and because you know the truth, you're able to walk in the victory. But if you don't have the belief to start with, you're on the wrong path. And that's why I want to talk about Jesse Duplantis' new book called Believe. Tell me about this one, Jesse. Well, you know, it's a very simple word, believe, you know, and if we just believe what God said, like, uh, they, uh, like Hank was saying, you know, they call uh, that, that gentleman that was preaching, they say, we hate everybody. No, we don't. We hate the sin. Now, now they don't like that. They say, we love the sin and hate the sin. No, no. What happened is the word of God stirs up devils real quickly. See what I'm saying? So when you take the word belief, and this, this is my book, and it's a little small one, and I just decided, I said, you know, all we got to do is believe in God's word. Just believe what he said. 
You know, I don't hate anybody. I cannot hate. If you're a true Christian, you can't hate a soul because God don't hate people, but you can hate what they're doing. You see, and, and they say, well, this nation is not found on Judeo-Christian ethic. You know what? You know, when the State of the Union, he kept saying my predecessor, my predecessor, my predecessor. He wouldn't say Trump's name. My predecessor, my predecessor. Well, sir, if you look at the Constitution and you look at all the other documents, it says uh, pro uh, providence, 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 providence. They're talking God all the time in all these wonderful documents that belong to the United States of America. So I would say this word belief, if you believe God's word, God will change your life. Ladies and gentlemen, if you believe the Constitution the way it is wrote, it will change this nation. Listen to me. It all has to do with the word believe. And if we believe it, we will receive it. And the Lord said, ask anything in my name. That's what we need to do. We need to make anything the biggest word we can come out of our mouth. Anything in God's name, it shall come to pass. That's what this book is about. All right, believe, and they can get it at your website, jdm.org, and I yes. guess wherever books are sold. Is that correct? Yes, like that. And or you can go to jdm.org. That's our website for all the ordering information and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. And, and it, it, I hope you get it. You'll be blessed by it. And, uh, and, and I'm telling you, it's a very simple word. Why did you get married? Because you believed in your wife. Why That's did she true. marry you? Because she believed in you. Oh, it all yeah. has to do with belief, just simple right. belief. Yeah, and of course, while you're there, get that book, I Never Learned to Doubt. That's one of my favorites. Uh, you'll en <laughs> enjoy you. that one, yeah. All right, so, Tony, we, we, we're hearing all of this about um, the left and people that, you know, there's a lot of slander. Let's be real. There's a lot of slander going on out there. And I won't say it's necessarily just on the liberal side against the, the right side or the conservative side. There's going back and forth. How do we deal with slander? We speak truth. We just continue speaking truth. We don't let the left or the right, um, the the, um, the secular side, hijack us from what we're called to do. We are ambassadors of truth. And truth, being the light, is always going to take care of the darkness. So that's our, that's our mission. That's our job. Keep speaking victory. Keep speaking the blessing of the Lord. Re uh, I, I remember that old song that they used to sing, Whose Report Will You Believe? I've decided I'm going to believe the report of the Lord. It's victory. It's blessing. It's favor. It's prosperity. Keep speaking truth. And every time you hear a lie, don't even argue. Don't even argue with them anymore. Just speak the truth, and the truth will stand on its own. Amen. Amen. All right, look, this is a great clip. I want to end. This is our last video of the night, uh, and then we'll spend a little time here to wrap up. Uh, this actually aired on ABC. Uh, watch this. A boy, the flag, and his truck. Sounds like a Texas story. Watch. Wherever 17-year-old Cameron Blazik goes, so does Old Glory. The flag itself represents this country, this beautiful country that we live in. He fastened the flag to his truck this summer. It's very strongly secured in there. I mean, you can't pull that out if you tried. It abides by the U.S. flag code. I got pulled aside by my counselor and vice principal, and they told me, hey, you got to remove the flag off the back of your truck. And I kind of looked at him, and I, I said, no. I said, it's not going to happen. I said, I can't. Cameron held the line. Read through East Central's 2023-2024 handbook, and the word flag wasn't even mentioned in the parking lot or driving section. The only section it's mentioned in is the flag twirling section. Boy. The next day at school, others showed up with flags of their own. There was a huge support group there um, that believed and stood for the same thing that I did, and I was kind of shocked by that. That's when the principal sent a letter to parents Friday to, quote, address recent concerns and confusions, writing, I am pleased to inform you that we are allowing the display of the U.S. flag by students in the parking lot. Principal Black clarified to WCPO in an email that there has never been a complaint about the U.S. flag, one literally hangs above the parking lot, and that school administrators decided Friday they would, quote, prohibit other flags if they were determined to be offensive. A social media post about all this went viral. I was pretty surprised by it that it got so many views and pretty much that it got the attention it did. There are veterans in this family, and Cameron himself is considering serving. Yeah, I'm pretty proud of him. He stood his ground and stood up for what he believed in. The American flag has been politicized in recent years. One poll shows 83% of Republicans have a very positive view of the American flag. That number drops to 49% for Democrats. I think everybody gets offended over something that doesn't mean what everybody says it does. This flag represents our country and the people who died for it and fought for it. And I respect that with my whole heart. 
old glory, sparking new debate. Now, who would have ever, that's a great story, and it gives me a lot of great hope, you know, for the next generation. Pastor Hank, there's, he's standing strong. But, you know, who would have ever thought that, you know, I was sitting there thinking back uh, years ago, you know, who would have ever thought uh, displaying the American flag would be an issue anywhere in America? But yet, look at this in the times that we're in. Right. Well, like the young man said, it represents uh, our great country, that flag, but also those who died and bled for it. You know, Pastor Gene, if you remember right after 2020, I was walking my three German shepherds <clears throat> and there were veterans that uh, were not flying their flags. And I, I confronted them. I said, what's wrong with you? They said, well, it's, it's dangerous. I said, what's wrong with you? You signed up at one point in your life to defend this great country. <clears throat> and they bowed their head and they said, you're right. And now they are proudly uh, you know, displaying their flags. I said, look, if you got to go get a pair of flag boxer shorts, do it. Just represent America. And uh, now, man, my neighborhood, people are always uh, waving their flags and displaying them proudly because this is America. That's what it stands for. But I want to say this last thing. You know, I think it's prophetic that you saw a, a young person. It gives us hope that, you know, it's not just the Republican Party or the America that's just made up of a bunch of old washed up people are like uh, the liberals call us the angry uh, rule. Uh, remember that that word that they used? Um, it's the young that's beginning to rise and recognize how important freedom is, how important our country is. And if you go back to the Bible, God used a young lad, multiplied the five loaves and the two fishes, and it released something supernatural for the betterment of the masses. This is what we're going to see, God moving on the young to better the masses or the country. Second, God used David, who took out Goliath when nobody else would deal with them, not the military, so to speak, not uh, the leaders at that time. It was a young man that was backed by God and loved his country that restored God back to the country and freed the country from the hands of Amen. the enemy. And that's what's prophetic about what we just saw. That is so true. All right, Tony, I get your thoughts here as we wrap up. Please do not include flag boxer shorts in your comments. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> what a time to be alive. This is a great time to be alive. You know, I was watching, it was maybe two years ago, I was watching some black and white film of A.A. A. Allen, William Branham, Jack Coe, just watching what God used to do. And I said out loud to the Lord, I said, I wish I would have been alive then. And he spoke back. He said, I didn't need you then. He said, I needed you now. I had those generals then, but I needed you now. What a time to be alive that in this rapture generation, this last day church, God chose you and I to That's be right. at the forefront so of this revival. It's a great time to be alive, ladies and gentlemen. It is so good, Tony. So good. All right, Brother Jesse, yeah. wrap us up. What? The reason why they don't want you to focus on the flag because they want you to focus on them. But let me tell you something about flag shorts. It's called Apollo Creed, coming to America. So I think Hank Kuhneman had a word of knowledge right there. Praise the Lord. <laughs> you know? And I'll tell you what, why would anybody be mad with a statement that says, make America great? Why, why would any American, whether you're Democrat, Republican, Independent, you ought to want to make America great because you live in that. So I'm just saying this. I'm going to focus on the word because the word will make America great. It will make right. a person that's a sinner a great person that will know Jesus Christ in every which way, shape, or form. Ladies and gentlemen, I mean this sincerely. If you're listening to me, Jesus is coming. And I want to tell you Amen. something. They may, they may be looking at over here, but when he splits that sky, son, they're going to look up and see him. And I want right. to tell you something. I, and he's going to be wearing that beautiful robe, but I'm going to tell you something. Jesus is coming, and I personally believe we're going to see it in our lifetime. That's what I'm believing for. Me too. I'm with you. I'm with you. All right. So as we wrap this up, listen, this is why I know that you watch. People stop us all over. the. Everybody on this program has been stopped and talked to about Flashpoint. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being a part. 
uh, because you are a part. You're the integral part here on the Victory Channel. And the reason Flashpoint is here on the Victory Channel is because Kenneth Copeland said, Gene, you need to do something. Click, he hung up the phone, and that was about all the direction I got. So that is why we're here. But we want to bring you the fact, and this is very important, we want to bring you the facts, but we want to bring you the faith that goes along with it. What you're hearing from these gentlemen tonight is you're hearing in their comments, you're hearing the faith that we're going to come out this other side. We're going to come out, we're going to come through this victorious. Mike Lindell, we're going to get the 9-0, we're going to, or whatever. It's going to be victorious. That's why we're here, to build your faith, because you've heard me say it. It's not a political problem in America that's going to change to fix it. It's a spiritual problem we've got to fix. We fix that, we fix what's wrong in America and what's wrong in the world. Because when America, you know, it affects the world, whatever we do. All right, special thanks to, of course, uh, Brother Jesse Duplantis, Tony Suarez, Mike Lindell, Pastor Hank Kuhneman. Listen, I really do want to see you in Tulsa, Oklahoma, the Rescue America Tour, our next stop, March 21 and 22. Go on, make your reservations, join us. And we look forward to seeing you there. And always remember, we're often imitated, but we're never duplicated. We're always to the right of center. See you next time.